Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video Trudeau. Welcome to the Worms Armageddon Political Simulation Machine 2019 General Election Special. Oh, it is time for one of my favourite types of video. Oh, yes. Now, just in case you knew, what we do on this channel is, when there's a major election, we take all the data and we feed it into the single most advanced political simulation machine in existence. That's Worms Armageddon and we use it to figure out what the result's gonna be. Now, you may well be thinking, John, that's ridiculous. Worms Armageddon can't possibly predict the results of elections. Well, you say this, but we did one of these for the general election in 2017, and it predicted Labour would lose, and the last Tory standing would be Boris Johnson. Labour did lose, Boris Johnson went on to be leader. We did another for the US election in 2016, during the primaries, and we predicted Donald Trump would be the Republican nominee and he would go on to win the election. And he did. And as I say, we did that during the primaries when Donald Trump was an outsider and no one was predicting he was going to be president, all right? This machine is significantly more accurate than literally any other political pundit. So let's dive in. I'll show you how it works. So what I've gone and done is I've set up some AI teams for the UK's major political parties, the Conservatives and Labour, coloured of course in their usual blue and red. And yes, I know the Lib Dems ought to be orange, that isn't an option, so uh, they just have to have light blue, they're just going to have to deal with it. Because yellow was the only vaguely orangey option, and the SNP actually is supposed to be yellow, so they get dibs on yellow. Now, as the biggest parties in the country, the Conservatives and Labour get to start with eight worms each. The other parties, meanwhile, are a bit smaller, so while they can contribute to the election, they're unlikely to actually win it. So as a result of that, the Lib Dems are going to be represented by four worms, the SNP by another four worms, and the other parties by five worms, because that is one worm per other major political party that might in theory actually win a seat or two. The Greens, the Welsh Nationalists, the DUP, Sinn Féin, and the Brexit Party. But there is one other group present as well, the UK public, a team of eight worms that I will be controlling myself. And, as usual, they will not be fighting. Instead, every time I get a turn, I will be passing, because each of these eight worms represents a group of people, an institution, a concept. So not only are we going to predict who's going to win the election, we're also going to predict how each party is going to treat various UK institutions and groups. Right, I think that map looks perfectly fine as well. Let's flipping dive in. And we fortunately begin with my team, the team that will be passing at every turn. So yes, this is representing various groups, etc. So I'm starting off with the elderly, there's children up there, the poor over there, students, the economy, Brexit itself, the NHS and... Oh no. EU nationals are looking flipping precarious right there. That's... That's not a good place for the EU Nationals, so, uh, yeah, someone's gonna be tossing them under a bus. And indeed, every single turn, I will simply be passing immediately. The UK will not actually be doing anything, they just exist to have stuff done to them. And the first turn goes to Boris Johnson, leader of the Conservative Party, and formerly our Prime Minister. Though technically, I believe, not at the moment, just because, you know, there's a general election going on. And, oh no, no, straight away! Oh my goodness. Okay, so... The Conservatives have started off strong there. They've immediately just turned around, fired a rocket straight into the face of the children, and tossed them into the sea. So, there we go. People say this simulation isn't accurate. The Conservatives just decided to toss the children straight in the flipping sea. Next up, we have got Jeremy Corbyn, leader of the Labour Party. Not looking great in the polls right now. Let's see what he can do today. And, okay. Where's he going? And, oh! Okay. Took a shot there over at the poor and Chakramuna. And the poor took the brunt of it. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn, you said the poor would be better off under you. What happened, man? Straight over to Joe Swinton, leader of the Liberal Democrats. And a bit of an odd party. Oh, okay. Straight for Brexit. Not too surprising there. The Lib Dems have promised to just straight up cancel Brexit. So the fact Joe Swinton went straight for Brexit, not too surprising. You see, this simulation, absolutely flipping perfect. And who was at the bottom there? There was a very light tap. Nicola Sturgeon taking a shot at Labour. Did more damage to the poor though. The poor taking a lot of damage. More than they really should be taken. And we move over now to Caroline Lucas. And oh, blimey. Green Party MP there, took a shot at Jeremy Corbyn. Okay, Jeremy Corbyn doing uh, very badly, very badly indeed. And uh, 
It is time for Brexit to have its go, but of course Brexit shall not in fact be having a go. Brexit will sit right here until someone decides what to do with it. And over to Sajid Javid, the UK Chancellor, and oh no. Oh no, that's a Conservative Chancellor and the elderly are right there. Oh, this doesn't look good. This isn't looking good for the elderly at all. No, don't do it! Okay, he took a shot straight at the elderly there, but they've survived. For now. In comes John McDonnell, Shadow Chancellor. So the man who may well be the Chancellor after this election if Labour wins. Not looking too likely at the minute, but could still happen. We'll see what this simulation says and... Bit of a weak shot there. Could have done more damage. Could have probably killed John Swinney and Steve Barkley if he wanted to. And here we go. As I was trying to say before, Lib Dems. Bit of an odd party at the minute because the most well-known MPs aren't actually Lib Dem MPs. They're MPs from other parties who have jumped ship to the Lib Dems. So both Chuck Ramuna and Luciana Berger, in fact, formerly Labour MPs, but now standing for the Liberal Democrats. Now, who have we got here? That was someone from the SNP doing a lot of damage to Pretty Patel right there. That was Ian Blackford, leader of the SNP, I believe, which is a distinct role from Scottish First Minister, which is what Nicola Sturgeon is. So... Okay, the other parties. Who's that right now? That was someone from the other parties. And Dominic Raab gets a great big bazooka in the face from Nigel Farage. Yes, indeed. There's not been a huge amount of love between the Brexit party and the Conservatives. A little bit mine, so maybe that's a bit surprising. Then again, I feel like any friendship between the two is always just for public appearances, really. And straight over to the economy. Nobody has done anything to the economy just yet. The economy is safe and sound. It is nice and tucked out of the way, so... Actually, the economy in the NHS might be safe for the time being, though uh, I'm still not feeling good about those EU nationals. They may be at full health for the time being. That ain't gonna last. And straight over to Dominic Raab, senior minister right now. And oh, who's he going for right now? Oh, blimey. Okay, he was trying to get some revenge on Nigel Farage and he got it, but oh, here comes Diane Abbott. Okay, the best shot she's got would be at Adam Price, leader of the Welsh Nationalists. So uh, she'll probably be going in that direction. Generally, Labour and the Welsh Nationalists have been uh, pretty friendly, but unquestionably, Labour would like to hold more territory in Wales. That would be very useful to them. And I believe that round the back there is indeed, yep, that's Luciana Berger, formerly of Labour. Now, in fact, oh, blimey, that's a good shot. That's a good shot against Arlene Foster. Right there, some good damage. Did a tiny bit of damage to Brexit too. Lib Dems really want Brexit dead right now. John Swinney of the SNP. Oh, he's got such, such a good shot. And Steve Barkley. One shotgun blast there. One fire punch. That's Steve Barkley in the flipping sea. Steve Barkley, of course, the Brexit minister, effectively. So, logically, the SNP would want him dead. And no. I think he's going for... Possibly John McDonnell. That's a hell of a grenade throw. And... Yeah, very light tap there. Should have gone for Steve Barkley, really. That would have been better. Labour... Actually winning for the time being. Very surprising indeed. But some of them in some very precarious positions. And good hit. Good hit against Diane Abbott right there. Labour versus the Welsh Nationalists. That is a brutal fight for the time being. Students just chilling out next to... Oh no. Not Liz Truss. Oh this is... This is not good. A lot of groups who generally are not well treated by the Conservatives are stuck close by to the Conservatives. Pretty Patel gets a turn. She was actually not so long ago expelled from government for having secret meetings with a foreign power that she didn't declare. But she's back in government now, rather than prison. Funny old world. Right, Emily Thornbury. So, what have you got for us? I think right now... I think there might be another... No, there is no other Labour person buried behind Brexit. She could have gone for Brexit and Luciana Berger, but instead she's going for... Oh, I think she's going for... Oh, that's a really beautiful shot there. Emily Thornbury with the grenade throw of the match. It's like, oh, wow. Nigel Farage taken the flip out by Labour. Right there, Michael Gove is dead as well. And Chakramuna. Oh, my goodness. That's That was one hell of a throw, but uh-oh. So, um... There might be a bit of backlash against this. At this point, the elderly are being caught in the fire. There's, there's more to go. Yeah, that was one hell of a throw. And the elderly are... The elderly are just, just still alive. That was a hell of a move from Emily Thornbury. But, yeah, big damage to Conservatives. But, oh, oh, that's Lib Dems. No! The Lib Dems, you promised the EU nationals you were on their side. And then the first opportunity, you threw them under the bus. Well, only was a student in 2010 could have seen this one coming. Moving over to Keith Brown there, deputy leader of the SNP. And uh, 
elderly go down. I feel like they were just collateral damage and trying to take out the Tory Chancellor there. So, uh, sad, sad stuff. Labour still doing terrifyingly well at the minute. The Conservatives not doing well at all, but they do still have some worms in excellent positions. Moving over to Arlene Foster, lays good mine, does some decent damage to Keir Starmer and Joe Swinson. And, uh, oh, the NHS is looking uh, a lot more exposed uh, than it was. But who is going to be the first to actually launch an attack on the NHS? Steve Barclay, Brexit Minister, right there, and... Uh, there's a lot of SMP right there. There is a lot of SMP, but he'd also be hitting Pretty Patel if he made that shot. So what's he going to try and do? He might be going for Diane Abbott at the back. No, the wind's not in the right angle. Could be going for John McDonnell. Very likely that will be a good target. And yeah, nice easy one right there. Good bit of damage, but okay. He's just joining the great big SMP conservative cuddle right there. Ken Starmer, Shadow Brexit Secretary. And Brexit is, uh, Brexit is up there, kind of out of the way. And, uh, oh dear. Oh flipping dear. Labour doing some severe damage to the NHS right there. That was probably a PFI bazooka if I had to guess. So, uh, Joe Swinson coming in. Leader of the Liberal Democrats. Not doing so hot. All things considered, this has not been a good campaign for her so far. But, she's alive uh, for the time being. Lib Dem's actually in last place. Drop some mine on... Uh, Arlene Foster, but the NHS is right there too. Oh no, Joe. Joe, how could you? Darlene Foster is definitely going to be down. And, oh dear. Is that going to be enough to kill the NHS? It might just be the Lib Dems have killed the NHS. Okay, that's, that's one I was not expecting. Joe Swinson, how could you? Back over to Nicholas Sturgeon, who's doing very well right now. And might actually be able to... No. Decides not to attack Jeremy Corbyn directly, but does a little bit of flame damage there. Ton of bit of damage to Brexit. The SNP have just been chipping away at Brexit so far. Brexit, not looking so hot. Moving over to Michelle O'Neill, leader of Sinn Féin, and Joe Swinson is right there. Oh, blimey! That, that was a bit of a, a ballsy move there. Okay, so... Okay. As it turns out, Sinn Féin have just dynamited the Lib Dems uh, into next week. Joe Swinson... Uh, Goes the flip down. Michelle O'Neill took a little bit of damage there herself. No, actually, she didn't. I'm surprised. And the poor are now stuck in a corner. Yeah, they are looking battered. The poor have been picked on a lot during this fight. Honestly, I'm amazed the students are fine. But then Liz Truss hasn't even had a move yet. And uh, I don't think we should be too surprised to see uh, Andrea Ledsom doing some excellent damage to Ed Davey there. Immediately sinking him. Moving over to Barry Gardner of Labour and calling an airstrike. How did you fluff this up that badly, Barry Gardner? It's an airstrike. You point it where you want to go and it goes there. Moving straight back over to Lid Dems. Luciana. Oh, blimey! Luciana Berger attempts to take out. I think she was trying to take out the little cluster of Labour down there, but accidentally blew up her own face. Ian Blackford. Uh, yeah, right next to John Swinney right now. Difficult position for him. Going for. Is that a trick shot against... Yep, that's a trick shot against John McDonald there. Tiny bit of damage, but not too much. They've been struggling to hit him, but he's definitely getting weaker. Moving back over to Caroline Lucas of the Greens, who is... Oh, right next to Boris Johnson. Caroline Lucas just punches Boris Johnson right in the flipping face. Not too surprising, really. No love between those two whatsoever. Brexit is still alive, but it's hanging out next to a Lib Dem, so might not be around for too much longer. Oh, no. Liz Truss. The worst public speaker in the entire cocking world. And she's taking a shotgun to the students. The Tories started this match by taking out the children. Now they're taking a shotgun to the students too. But not the second barrel though. The second barrel's just going off into space. Liz Truss, as good with a shotgun as she is at delivering speeches. Angela Rayner in a good place right now. And with good wind, she could easily... Wow. Okay, she's not going for Keith Brown. Could have finished him off. Instead, uh, prioritising uh, Boris Johnson, uh, who is panting. He's on his last legs. Now, Luciana Berger. Will the Lib Dems kill Brexit? It's what they promised to do. So far, they've only managed to kill the flipping NHS. No, they're completely ignoring it. But they went for the poor. The Lib Dems, having flipping killed the NHS, are now taking out the poor. This is one hell of a flipping heel turn. Labour starting to struggle, actually. Conservatives and Labour pretty much neck and neck for the time being. And uh, what are you going for now? John McDonald should probably be able to survive that. But 
He's looking very, very weak. Adam Price, unlikely to be able to finish off Dan Abbott right now. No, instead he's working on just blasting his way out. Should have really gone like the other way if he wanted to blast his way out. But whatever, what could you flipping do? The economy, still just chilling out. No one dares go for the economy just yet. But sooner or later, Liz Truss is going to bomb it. Boris Johnson on his last flipping legs. Unlikely to be able to take out Caroline Lucas. Dynamite could do it, but that's not going to be enough. Even if that was two perfect shots, and that was not a perfect shot. That was a 22, not a 25. That's not enough to kill Caroline Lucas. She will get another turn before you do. So, Caroline Lucas, the Greens, might be able to take out the flipping Prime Minister. Unless, of course, something else happens. Back over to Labour. John Ashworth, Shadow Health Secretary, I believe. And going for, oh, going for Luciana Berger and Brexit. But really, I think they were going for the Lib Dems right there. Big fight and many seats between Labour and the Lib Dems. Not too surprising. In fact, that was it. The Lib Dems are out. The first to be eliminated. And uh, Keith Brown, Deputy SNP leader. Yes, indeed. With a very gentle touch there. Knocks Angela Rayner straight out. That was a big, big blow to Labour. She was at full health right there. Moving over to Michelle O'Neill, Sinn Féin's leader. And who's she going for right now? Keir Starmer. Okay, another big hit against Labour there. After looking very strong, Labour are falling the flip away. The UK public are looking fine, but mainly because the economy is safe in a hole for the time being. The Conservatives and the SNP looking good so far. Good hit. Good hit right there against Ian Blackford by Pretty Patel, though I think there might actually be more SNP in that hole as well. Jeremy Corbyn is actually still alive, but Nicola Sturgeon is looking strong, and that might be the end of Brexit right there. Jeremy Corbyn promising a second referendum on Brexit, and in this simulation, he is the one that killed it. So, read into that what you will. That's what the simulation says, and unsurprisingly, Nicola Sturgeon going for Emily Thornberry, Jeremy Corbyn. It might well be the SNP that screw over Labour. And that could well be the case. Labour losing many of their Scottish seats. No! Nicola Sturgeon flipping fluffs it. Labour would, of course, yes, be in a much stronger position if the SNP hadn't taken what were many of their seats historically. Here we go. Caroline Lucas is... Oh! Oh, no! Caroline Lucas, you didn't need to do that. Caroline Lucas has sacrificed herself to take out Boris Johnson. She didn't flipping need to. She could have just hit him with literally anything. He was basically dead, but... Boris Johnson goes down. He has not made it to the end, but that doesn't matter. The Tories are still winning. Andrea Leadsom is tucked away in a very, very good spot indeed. As weirdly is Keith Brown. It's a very precarious spot actually for Keith Brown, but... Angela Rayner chose not to take him out. Bad strategy by Labour there. And straight over to Steve Barkley. Probably looking to finish off Ian Blackford. No! Finally going to flipping finish off John McDonnell. And with a flipping trick shot too. That is going to pass on some damage to Liz Truss. So that's a little bit of extra damage to her. She's going to be fine. But I suspect she's going to start doing some terrible, terrible things to the students and the economy. Diane Abbott has... Uh, no, that was well in all fairness. It was unlikely she'd be able to get the kill. Now she can get an easy, reliable kill against Adam Price next time. Unlikely he can kill her. Diane Abbott should be around a little bit longer. Now, Ian Blackford, what have you got planned for us right now? And that is one hell of a throw. Where the hell is it going? And... Absolutely cocking nowhere. Good. Good, good, good. The great big conservative SNP cuddle continues. Back over to Adam Price, speak of the devil. And he goes for the fire punch too. Dan Abbott goes down to 30. That's a guaranteed 30 damage right there. But it's not enough. Not even nearly enough. And once again, the students are fine for the time being. But I don't trust Liz Trust. There we go. Andrea Ledson. What's she going to try and do? The wind is, yeah, favorable. No, nope. she's dropping in. Oh, she drops in an airstrike. That might be enough to kill. That's enough to kill Barry Gardner. And is the splash going to be enough to kill John Ashworth? And not quite. Not flipping quite. But Labour are on their last flipping legs. The star of the show so far. Emily Thornbury with that amazing shot. She's teleporting out of here. 
Possibly going to join the Lib Dems. Who flipping knows? Right, John Swinney. Still looking good. Could put a great big mine right there. No. Fire punches Steve Barkley, who is only just taking damage. The Conservatives in a very good place right now. And apparently Keir Starmer was actually still alive behind Michelle O'Neill. I didn't even realise that, but he's dead now and he might be about to drown her too. Is that enough to... Yes! Michelle O'Neill accidentally eliminating herself there. Sinn Féin out of the match. The economy is still alive. The economy has not even been touched yet. Nobody flipping dares attack the economy. But then again, here comes flipping Liz Truss. And is she going to be the one to do it? And... No. No, she's just going to randomly fire a bazooka in the air. Liz Truss, everybody. Right, over to John Ashworth. On his last legs here. What can he do to Nicola Sturgeon, who is looking so strong, so flipping strong? Well, he's opened up a path to her, but now he can't do more than 25 damage. I mean, all of them together might be able to take her out. That was a solid 22, but this is not looking good for Jeremy Corbyn. What the hell is Keith Brown going to do? He's going to call in airstrike right there. That did absolutely nothing, Keith Brown. Dear oh flippin' dear. Right, Deputy Leader, the SNP, right over there. Over to Adam Price, who gets an attack in before Dan Abbott, but wastes it, wastes it on a flipping airstrike. Oh, no. That should hand that victory to Diane Abbott, but Labour are really, really on their last legs right now. Over to Pretty Patel, who's got a good shot there at John Swinney, and takes it. The SNP looking... Very, very vulnerable. All right, they could be pushed into the sea without too much difficulty. Jeremy Corbyn gets another go and not going for Nicola Sturgeon, going for... Oh, that's a really nice grenade toss right there. That was beautiful. Takes out Ian Blackford. That's going to be enough to potentially finish off... Yeah, just finishes off John Swinney. And that's going to be enough to take out Steve Barkley. Okay, Labour are not doing well, but bloody hell, they have been good on the grenade tossers. Emily Thornbury earlier, Jeremy Corbyn right now, but oh no. This could be the end for Jeremy Corbyn. Not if Nicola Sturgeon can't figure out how a shotgun works, though. And she misses twice in a row. Could this be a secret under-the-table election pact between Labour and the SNP? Because Nicola Sturgeon, she fluffed what would have been an easy shot there. That was a lot of flipping damage. And at this point, that is another failed shot by the Welsh Nationalists there. Diana Abbott should be due for another attack sooner rather than later. The economy has still not been flipping touched. Liz Trust does not flipping dare. Now... Andrea Leadsom, that is poor wind for her. What is she going to do at this point? And she's just going to try and blast her way out. Fine. She's just going to basically cut her way through to where the action is. But she is looking in a strong position. That's our business secretary, by the way. She's never actually set up or run a business, but don't let that get in the way, Andrea. Meanwhile, Diane Abbott once again completely flipping fluffs it. Keith Brown surely going to teleport out sooner or later. And no, actually... Just starting to get to the position where, wow, did you just actually... Did he just do it? Did he, just, he just took out John Ashworth. That was actually a nice shot. And uh, Jeremy Corbyn, I don't think he'd be killed by that. No, he does. The SMP just, just took out Jeremy Corbyn. Literally. And Emily Thornbury too. What the bloody hell is this? Is that... No, that's not the end of Labour. Because Diane Abbott's still here. But a single fire punch will put pay to that. The SNP have basically destroyed uh, Labour's chances here. Absolutely flipping destroyed them. Uh, at this point, the Conservatives are looking dominant. I do not see a way back in at this point. The SNP are doing uh, fine. But what are they really going to do in all that? That might have been a mistake. Yes, basically Liz Truss has just succeeded in slowly setting herself on fire and doing damage to the economy for no reason whatsoever. Now, back to the Labour Welsh hole and still nothing. Okay, fine. Moving over to Nicola Sturgeon, who is still alive. She's doing pretty well. Question is, uh, what's she going to do now? She could go for... Oh, she's going for a really long range shot there. And not terrible. Couple more like that, might be able to get at Liz Truss, but would do a lot of damage to the economy at the same time. Adam Price, 
Will he finally figure out how to? Oh, I almost thought for a second there that I was going to come back on them and actually finish them both off. But, as it turns out, no. Not yet. No health on the field right now. The economy is, yes, now taking the tiniest, tiniest bit of damage. The Conservatives did that damage. They didn't mean to. They just accidentally set fire to themselves and, oh, okay. I think Pretty Patel might be trying to get to the students right there. Diane Abbott again. Any plans to take out Adam? Oh! Okay. Managed to do some damage to herself. Some damage to her friend over there. Keith Brown continues trying to just blast his way through. I mean, he has done more than he has any flipping right to do. But if we run out of time, sudden death starts, the sea level starts rising, then uh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be unfortunate for him. Uh, right flipping there. Along with Adam Price, along with Dan Abbott, they're all in bad positions for dealing with the sea level. Liz Truss still just sitting in a hole, doing nothing, but instead over to Andrea Ledsom, who might, with that wind, try and blast through to Diane Abbott. Nope, she's just going to try and blast through. Then again, one more good bazooka shot. She will potentially have a shot down at them. Would be able to finish off Labour once and for all. And Diane Abbott might be about to give her that hole. No, she's going for a grenade throw. That's, that's a hell of a throw there, but no fluffed it. All right, she saw what Jeremy Corbyn did. She saw what Emily Thornbury did. She tried to recreate it, but she's fluffed it. But Nicola Sturgeon's got that idea too. And another fluff. Okay, some good long-range grenade tosses right now. Adam Price, in theory, has access to the outer world right now. And no, does not go for it. Andrea Ledsummer might need to use her shot opening up that passageway. The economy still at 97. What is going on here? How is the UK public in second place? Oh, Liz Truss might be about to sort that out, though. Yes, Liz Truss finally shows her true colours. She has got out the shotgun. She is taking it to the students. She is taking it to the economy. But decides against using the second barrel. Just too close. She does not want to do damage to herself. And... That's a optimistic shot there by Dan Abba, but it did some good work. It did some actually good work there. What is Keith Brown going to do? He's just going to try and blast his way through. Sooner or later, actually, he's not going for Nicholas Sturgeon because they're in the same party. So I'm not sure what Keith Brown wants there. Okay, so these two down in the hole, just a reminder, they are at war with each other. They're just... Not finishing each other off, presumably, because they're worried about the splash damage, the friendly fire, all of that stuff. Over to students who are, amazingly, not that badly damaged yet, but Liz Truss has got the taste for blood now. We're getting into the long-range grenade tosses right now. Pretty Patel going for... Going for Nicola Sturgeon. Couldn't quite land it. She is only one good grenade toss away from being killed herself. Diane Abbott, once again, down in the hole, going for... Diane Abbott successfully hits herself, and thus destroys Labour. Labour, in fact, not destroyed by the Conservatives, not destroyed by the Brexit Party, not destroyed by the Lib Dems, destroyed by themselves. It was infighting that did it in the end. The political simulation machine, as I say, is literally perfect. You know, the weird thing is, when we actually ran this simulation back in, I believe it was the 2015 election, the SNP did really, really well in that as well. And they did do pretty well in that election. So uh, this could be a good sign of the SNP reclaiming some of the seats from the Conservatives that they lost in Scotland in 2017. Uh, certainly for the time being, uh, nothing much going on with Keith Brown down over there. Now, Nicola Sturgeon, she is in a good position to get some grenade throws off. So we'll see what goes on. But first, Liz Truss. What are you actually going to... No, she's just passing. Liz Truss is literally passing. Absolutely, literally useless. And uh, interesting, ambitious shot there. Not bad. One more of them. You might just take out Pretty Patel. But this, weirdly, might actually come down to Andrea Ledsom versus Keith Brown. Kind of a fighter that nobody's right there. Pretty Patel, probably the most well-known person left after Nicola Sturgeon. And speaking of Andrea Ledsom, she no longer needs to take out Dan Abbott. Dan Abbott took out herself. So, what are you planning to do now, precisely? Just continue blasting through. Probably wants to get its students in the economy right there. 
Pretty Patel is in a dangerous position with the right wind and Nicola Sturgeon has got a favourable wind right now. That's looking really good actually. That might be enough. That might be the 37 she needed. 32. Pretty Patel is still alive. Economy at 72. Right now, the UK public are almost actually ready to win this. Liz Trust is... Oh! Liz Trust has teleported away. She's gone into a really, really good spot to take out Nicola Sturgeon. But Keith Brown has a shot at her too. Doesn't want to take it though. He does not want to take it. Liz Truss could take out Keith Brown pretty easily from that spot right there. Just past that turn. The students in the economy are still alive. They're actually still alive for the time being. This is remarkable. And in comes a shot from Pretty Patel. I think she was actually going for them though. Pretty Patel wants the economy to go down with her. If she's going to die, she's taking all of us with her. Nicola Sturgeon going for... That's a really nice shot. Oh, not quite as good as I thought. Does a fair bit of damage. Should make her nice and vulnerable next time. Who's up next? Is actually back over to Andrea Ledsom. Doesn't have a great shot at anyone right now. She's just slowly working her way forward here. But... Give it another turn or two, she will have a shot at the students and the economy. Back over to Keith Brown, and uh, does he have a shot at Liz Truss? He might do. Not just yet, but he is creating one. Give it again a turn or two, he will have the shot he needs. And I think it might actually be, uh, is it Liz Truss up next? It is. I don't think she can kill Nicola Sturgeon this turn. And is she going to fluff it? And... Uh, one. Yes, completely. Liz Trust basically Liz Trust it all up. Because if there's one thing you can rely on with Liz Trust, she's going to Liz Trust it. In comes, oh, that's, that's an optimistic throw. But it only needs the slightest bit of contact to finish off Pretty Patel. It does not, though. It does not. Pretty Patel back again. Only five health, but she still gets a turn. And that is, yep, yeah, Pretty Patel desperately, desperately wants to screw over the economy and the students. They've done nothing to her. There are enemies shooting at her right now, but screw it. Pretty Patel wants the students and the economy dead. Damn it. And who are we moving over to now? Speaking of which, students just hiding in the hole with the economy. They just want to be left alone. Is Andrea Ledson doing exactly the same thing? Yes! At this point, the Conservatives are completely ignoring Nicola Sturgeon. They just desperately want the students to die. Back over to Nicola Sturgeon. Another grenade toss coming in. Is that going to be at... I think that was at Pretty Patel. But again, she just does not have that labour knack of nailing the grenade throws. Liz Truss gets yet another go, but... Can she put it off? That looks pretty good. That looks uh, not so great, actually. You just need to go down there and shotgun a list. It's not that hard. And every moment that passes, Keith Brown just gets closer and closer to... What the hell was... Whoa! Okay. Keith Brown just nailed Pretty Patel from one side of the map to the other. That's... That's bloody impressive right there. Maybe not Emily Thornbury level, but still pretty damn good. Now, Andrea Ledsom is finally close to her destination. She has almost made it to the economy. She has spent so much time and effort trying to destroy the economy. She's nearly flipping done it. Now, Nicola Sturgeon at this point, what are you going for? Are you using the wind to try and get to... I think Nicola Sturgeon's going for the economy too. Nicola. Liz Truss is right flipping there. And speaking of Liz Truss, what is she planning to do at this point? I think she's just going to try and toss more grenades. Uh, yep, yeah, she's just continually failing to take out Nicola Sturgeon. Sooner or later, Keith Brown's going to do it, all right? Keith Brown's going to get her because Keith Brown is the flipping MVP of this match. I suspect, actually, you know what? He's not going to have the most damage of anybody. That's definitely got to be Emily Thornbrain. And here we go. Andrea Ledsom, finally ready to enact her master plan and completely screw over the students and the economy. Nicholas Sturgeon, is this actually what you're trying to do right now? Are you genuinely trying to take out Shears? She's actually going for the economy. Basically, the politicians have all put aside their differences in agreement that they're going to destroy students before they turn on each other. Liz Truss, are you in on this too right now? And oh, 
Oh, no! Liz Truss has turned on Nicola Sturgeon. That was uh, not a great tip, but not a terrible one either. A good, solid bazooka shot will finish her off. Can Keith Brown... Oh, Keith Brown! In with the flipping saving throw right there. Was that... It's not enough. Liz Truss is not flipping dead. She could still finish off Nicola Sturgeon. It is down to the flipping wire here. Andrew Ledsom versus the SMP on the far side of the map. And... Oh, no. The students are dead. And in killing the students, you have accidentally completely knackered the economy. Andrea Ledson, what have you done? Okay, so now it is purely Conservatives versus SMP. Now, this should be a nice easy kill. I mean, that should be enough right there. That should be enough. Just the slightest tap should be four. Get seven. Liz Truss goes down. Okay, now the question is, how are they going to take each other out at this point? Because if it goes to sudden death... In theory, Andrea Ledson might have the high ground. Then again, Nicola Sturgeon has access to high ground too. Keith Brown, not looking so good in that regard. Especially if at some point he accidentally blows up a box and sets himself on fire. The SMP are, however, actually in the lead right now. Which again, back when I ran this in 2015, they were as well. The SMP do very nicely in these things. A few turns later and all we've had is bazooka fire backwards and forwards, uh, clearing out some obstacles. But they are almost through the barrier in the centre right now. Keith Brown in a bit of a difficult position, however. Nicola Sturgeon might have a shot momentarily, depending on what Andrea Ledson does uh, right now. And not quite yet. It might be up to Nicola Sturgeon to create the opening. If she does, uh, that would be a mistake. Because uh, that would basically mean Andrea Ledsom had... Uh, oh, no. She's just left herself wide open. And Andrea Ledsom now has a shot. She takes it. She misses. She's got another before Nicola Sturgeon gets her shot in return. Because of... No! Keith Brown is teleported to... Oh! Keith Brown on the flipping high ground. And it's sudden death. Everyone is down to one hit point. It is one flipping shot. Kills. And Keith Brown is on the high ground. That's enough to kill him. Keith Brown is down with only one hit point. That's going to be enough. Any movement whatsoever. Four hit points. He goes down. It's now up to Nicola Sturgeon as to whether she can finish off Andrea Ledsom or not. And she's got one shot. It's all down to this. She misses! Nicola Sturgeon misses! She took her shot and she flipping missed! But there's going to be a few shots backwards and forwards before we actually get to the sea level claiming them. Um, come on, Andrea Ledson, what have you got planned? And nails it. Absolutely flipping nails it. And with that, the SMP goes down and the Conservatives are left as the victors. So, let's get to the individual awards here. So, Worm of the Match, in fact, goes to Keith Brown with seven kills. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. But most kills with a single shot goes to Emily Thornbury, who got herself three kills right there. The same shot got her 234 damage. Incredible. Also gets the best shot award. Emily Thornbury cleaning up. However... Andrea Ledsom, the ultimate winner, picks up the Entertainment Award. Meanwhile, the economy was boring and children were useless. So, how do we interpret these results, ladies and gentlemen? I would say that according to the Worms Political Simulation Machine, Labour are going to lose and the Conservatives might well be looking at a majority. That was a very, very good victory by them. But the strong showing by the SNP, followed by their last-minute loss... I would interpret as saying, as a result of the Conservatives winning, the SNP will push through Independence Referendum 2 in Scotland, which they will go on to lose by the narrowest of margins. Those are my predictions based on the Worms election simulation machine, okay? I just interpret the data. It is Worms Armageddon that has the secret magic recipe that means that somehow it knows the future. And... As I say, we have been correctly calling elections for many years at this point. So that appears will be the results according to this incredibly scientific method. 
So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Worms Armageddon political simulation machine. Hopefully, you join me in 2020 when we probably have to do this again. Because here in the UK, we just seem to enjoy doing constant election after election after election. Hopefully, you're looking forward to that because I sure as hell bloody am not. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nut. And this has been the Worms Armageddon political simulation machine. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China, I can die happily. Well, not happily, because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go! I've just started... Oh god. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree, the Earth was great. <laughs>